received a number of inquiries from school leavers who are curious about starting a career in watchmaking and they've asked Nick, are we hiring? Yes, Stephanie, we do. We are always looking for young and smart Australian kids to join watchmaking trade. And would it be fair to say that there isn't that much information out there with regards to starting that career in watchmaking, possibly because some view it as a dying trade and the future might be more in smart watches than in mechanical watches? Well, we don't know what the watch of the future will look like. But as long as there is a time to be measured, people will always wear watches. And wearing a finely crafted mechanical watch is a sign of sophistication. I'll say, for watchmakers, the future is bright. Watchmaking is a very unique trade that has been around for over 500 years. The first watchmakers and clockmakers work closely with scientists and astronomers and were technically and scientifically minded craftsmen. The knowledge about horology was highly guarded and was passed from master to student from generation to generation. The watchmaking trade opened to large population at the time of industrial revolution with formation of brains. Mass production required more watchmakers. The trade itself clustered around few towns and regions in Switzerland, France, Germany and east coast of the United States. Nowadays, modern watchmaking also thrives in Japan and China. And what about watchmaking in Australia? Well, there have always been skilled craftsmen and individuals in Australia capable of making and assembling watches, but until very recently, industrial modern watchmaking was practically non-existent. The first modern manufacturing workshop capable of producing watch parts was established only in 2017 in Sydney when Manufactured in Australia project started. And that's what we call making history. After two years of prototyping and making, we were able to read and understand the very DNA of a wristwatch. While our NH1 contained both Australian and Swiss made components, practically it was the very first watch that could be signed manufactured in Australia due to the fact that key components, like the main plate and bridges, were made in our workshop. A few months later, we took our project to the next level of engineering and manufacturing with the NH2 model, which contains even more Australian-made components. Key NH2 components are made of very unique tricomposite titanium alloy. This was the first time that a super light, non-corrosive, non-magnetic Tamascus alloy was successfully used in horology anywhere in the world. We are now ready for the next phase of Australian manufacturing and watchmaking and we are also in position to offer a unique once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to a young Australian to enter the watchmaking trade. Nick, you always talk about three special ingredients that we require from a candidate. What would you say that a successful candidate must have? Number one, attention to detail. Number two, willingness to be trained. Number three, long-term commitment. So what do you mean by attention to detail? Watchmaking is a pinnacle of mechanical engineering. Designing, making and handling parts machine to micron level is quite a challenge. A wristwatch is often called a miracle of mechanical engineering, not without reason. Attention to detail is essential. Attention to detail is not something that can be taught. It is a unique gift one is born with, like an ability to sing or paint. It is a talent. On the other hand, willingness to learn is simply a rational decision where students make themselves willing to acquire knowledge and excel in the trade, putting all other distractions aside, focusing on their career in watchmaking. A long-term commitment is ability to dream big. It is an ability to recognize very early that excelling in any trade or career or pursuit takes time. Success does not come overnight. For those who have dreamed to be recognized as the best of the best in the field of watchmaking, long time or more precisely lifetime commitment to learning, training, designing and making is essential. So just how long is this long term commitment? 10 years. Yes, for a young Australian, 10 years commitment to even the most exciting project might sound like an impossibility. However, allow me to present you with a more detailed roadmap of watchmaking training which will help you understand 
the big picture. Year 1. The first year of training starts behind the watchmaker's workbench. The very first step is getting familiar with watchmaking hand tools, tweezers, screwdrivers, some basic measuring tools. The learning commences with practical disassembly of mechanical manual wind watch, studying what makes the watch tick, assembly and adjustment. The daily routine revolves around the all other aspects of a real workshop environment from watch assessments, bracelet adjustments, cleaning, polishing to battery replacement. With so much new to learn and experience, time flies. And here is the exciting bit. Even from day one a student joins our team, he or she is on an annual salary of $40,000. Yes, we pay student to learn. The second year of watchmaking is still on the bench training. The focus is on self-winding watches and advanced repair techniques. Also, a young apprentice will be involved in the assembly of new watches. Great attention to detail will be expected. Plus, the salary goes up to $44,000. Year 3. In the third year of watchmaking, the students are introduced to mechanical chronographs like Calibre Eta 7750 as well as Omega 1861. Student is expected to confidently and independently undertake servicing of manual and automatic watches. It is also time to enter the world of watch parts manufacturing, learning how to use industry standard software like SOLIDWORKS or measuring micro components, which is an art form in itself. In years four to five, after three years of training, a young watch technician is ready to learn more advanced bench techniques like balance staff replacement and hairspring alignment, allowing him to complete servicing of mechanical chronographs without the master's help or supervision. The new chapter of training is the restoration of vintage watches. Even more time is allocated to training on the manual lathe, as well as programming and tooling on a CNC mill and CNC lathe, and other high precision modern manufacturing equipment. Overseas training at machine makers factories are great opportunities to learn from Swiss, German and Japanese CNC makers. Year 6 to 8. After earning the right to call oneself a watchmaker, the next three years of studying are devoted to repairs of complex watches from perpetual calendars to repeaters. The manufacturing of individual components from those made by turning, milling, hobbing and EDM wire cutting are no longer a mystery and young watchmaker is completely familiar with the entire process from design to machine setup to parts manufacturing and quality control and is capable of operating those machines unsupervised or without assistance. Year 8 to 10. The excitement is just beginning. Gaining the status of an experienced and well-trained watchmaker means having a major role in the design, making and assembly of the next generation of manufactured in Australia watches. Passing on your skills to young students and watchmakers is a new exciting chapter. And we will do whatever it takes to keep you in house. When you enjoy what you do, time flies. And while 10 years sounds like a long time, it will pass by before you know it. So Nick, for a young Australian school leaver who has attention to detail and is willing to commit and learn long term, what would you suggest they do? Get in touch with us as soon as possible. Send us an email and tell us about yourself and why you would like to join us. Be specific. If you are a mechanically minded person and have worked with tools or have already built something which literally could be anything, then do let us know about your project. We are eager to hear from you, so email us at nick at clockmaker.com.au.